We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. There must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. It's Ali Sasha's. Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Mary Drower was telling the truth. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. Hmm. A box of new stockings. Is not in any condition to be questioned. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. A bottle of... Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Enough lies. It's not lies. But you're not quite as clever as what you think. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound. And that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you. But I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. Do you want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Listen, I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. At what time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was always a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. You were not alarmed? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. 
Who do you think killed her? France! Her scoundrel of her husband! He was always after her for something! Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed, and I have better things to do than watch her shop. The priority is to question Asha. The priority is to question Asha. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Did Alice Asher suffer from nosebleeds? An inscription in German. Souvenir of our honeymoon in the Black Forest. To my Alice forever, Franz Asher. The Ashers were a lovely couple when they were young. The priority is to question Asher. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to... The priority is to... I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work.
is not in any condition to be. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <sighs> no. Yeah. We must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. They ought to be more careful about who they hire in the police. <laughs> This man is in rather a bad state. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. What were you doing yesterday at the time of the crime? Can't recall. Come on, my friend. Try to remember. It is important. I'm really sorry, sir. But I don't remember a thing. I see. But maybe you do remember threatening to kill your wife? So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. Are you often involved in fights? I don't know what you mean. The truth is that someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way! All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. You see the state of him. Very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he is not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume these things. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, that appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events.
the killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher keeps her back turned. The murderer grabs his walking stick. She turns around, he strikes her violently. He then places the ABC on the counter before leaving. No, the victim has no word to the temple. And the ABC is not the same as in the crime scene. Let us think again, mon cher. The killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet her customer. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. He then places the ABC on the counter before leaving. The ABC was not found like that. We are not far from the solution, Hastings. Would you mind if we thought about it a little more? The killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet her customer. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? She had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. I hope you're wrong for once. Bien. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No, unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home, there's nothing for us here. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm, the crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right foot and a wart just below his shoulder blade. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement à la Sherlock Holmes. Now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Nothing. Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Hastings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. It is not the right time. Daily Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Endover, murder of a tobacconist.
Ah, some cool hair. It is now the right time. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Andover, Hampshire, population 31,200 inhabitants. It's impossible to get through to Scotland Yard. <sighs> Let us examine this more closely. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, we're having a crazy time. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Let us examine the characters in this world. Let us examine the characters in this world. Right. Let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, this eye is weird. However, the characters in the two words do not match. Let us examine the characters in this world. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Let us examine the characters in this world. Yes, this eye is weird. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Let us examine the characters. Let us examine the characters in this world. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. That's right, the A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. 
I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, this eye is weird. I don't see anything. Let us examine the... Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Let us examine the characters in this world. Let us examine the character. Let us examine the. Let us examine the characters in this. Let us examine the characters in this world. Right. Let us compare this with. Nothing to report for these characters. Let us examine. Let us examine the character. Hmm. The W is not printed properly. Hmm. The W is not printed. Let us examine the characters in this world. Hmm. The W is not printed properly. Right. Let us. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about these case hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, Poirot, have you found something? Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. It may be time to go to Scotland Yard. To Scotland Yard, please.
Like all hunters, Hastings has always been fascinated by weapons. Jap appears to be snowed under. Jap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilancy. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I fear so. Good God, Poirot. Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I saw the name Asher clearly written over the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received a letter mentioned in Bexhill, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Bien. We should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Poirot? Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. We should have the courtesy to go and see Chief Inspector Jap before examining the crime scene. How do you do, gentlemen? 
Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine? Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're... The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. These marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. This key, this key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
the poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find Prince this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. 